Hey everyone, how you doing today? It has been a couple of weeks since we talked to this expert uh, because of the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, all of that good stuff. But let's welcome Jonathan Twomley back to the show. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Good to see you after, I guess, three weeks. So uh, yeah. good to be back. Thank you, buddy. Well, you know, one of the things I was really looking forward to talking to you about is uh, we've been talking about kind of what's going on in the pol politics for quite a while now, not from the politics aspect, but from what it means to real estate. So I want to stay yep. there. But I think yesterday was a game changer. Uh, I think there's a couple of things that I look at differently today than I did yesterday when I woke up. So I wanted to talk about those, but I also want to get your opinions because you know, you've been in the game longer. You look at much bigger deals than I do. And I was wondering what you thought of yesterday. Well, I think everybody thinks when we talk about yesterday, what we mean is oh, the, true. Nonsense, the nonsense that happened at the Capitol. Uh, that's actually not really the big news from the investment point of view. The, the big news is the election in Georgia right. and that the Democrats took both of those seats, which um, I was actually surprised by. I didn't. I didn't expect it to happen. Uh, I I figured that it was probably going to be one of two, right? Uh, and uh, with a lot of ticket splitting, but um, wound up being both. And uh, I so now the Democrats control, uh, you know, both, all of Congress uh, and the the White House. I think a lot of people are thinking now, uh oh, you know, Biden's tax plans, which include some changes for real estate are going to go through. Uh, I, I'm, I remain very skeptical about that, given the fact that the, the majorities in both houses are quite thin. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just, I think that there are enough, uh, you know, conservative Democrats and enough real estate connected Democrats that with such thin majorities, uh, I, I just don't see anything radical happening with respect to the goodies that real estate investors get. I, I mean, I, no, obviously, like they are a big fat target. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, uh, like, to be perfectly honest, and people are probably going to scream at me for saying this, I think, I think some of the tax goodies for real estate investors are really bad public policy. Okay, I think, I think they sh they probably ought to go away. Uh, from a public policy perspective. Sure. I mean, the government should not be in the business of picking winners and losers. And that's what it's doing with real estate saying, we're going to give you these goodies that nobody else gets. Uh, and I think I don't really see why they're justified. That being said, people love them. They're attached to them. They've been around for a very long time. And I just don't see them going away yeah. uh, under, under the current circumstances um, where you have such thin, uh, thin majorities in of, of Democrats in both houses, and as I said, you know, it, it's not it's not a monolithic party, right? I mean, they don't. The, the Republicans are famous for like lockstep voting. You know, they mm -hmm. won't even introduce legislation that doesn't have a majority. You know, the Hastert rule mm -hmm. that doesn't even have a majority of support from Republicans. Like they they tend to vote in a block. It's very unusual you see defections. Democrats is like a it's like herding cats, mm -hmm. right? And they don't have that kind of discipline, uh, and they there's a lot. I think a lot more intra-party disagreement, yeah. and I, I just don't see anything really, uh, you know, radical coming out of this. On top of which, like I think that, you know, Biden had the job of like bringing the Bernie Sanders voters yeah. along with him in the election, so he had to put forth a tax plan that like essentially for marketing purposes, that was going to be more radical. He's just not a radical guy, despite what you know, like I hear some of the crazy people talking about, mm -hmm. you know, he's just not, he's a very centrist kind yeah. of middle, middle of the road, like squish, if you want to say it, frankly. And like, I, I think whatever the actual tax plan may that, that may be like the opening gambit, right? Yeah. That gets, but we all know how the sausage is made. Like it doesn't, it's not a parliamentary system. Like they don't, the party doesn't put it out and then the ventures just vote on it and that's it. Like it's going to go through every lobbyist and every, you know, 
like special interest there is, and it's going to come out very differently than the way that goes in. Yeah. And, and I, I would just be shocked, shocked if things like the 1031 exchange and whatnot were eliminated. Uh, on the other hand, I'm going to tell you what is going to go away. Mm-hmm. Bonus depreciation is going away. Yep. Because it's already set to go away, right? Okay. It's under the existing legislation. It's set to sunset. And I think the original plan was that the Republicans figured they were going to hold on to Congress and whatnot, and they would just keep on extending it. Now that's not going to happen. So it, it'll it'll sunset according to the law that is on the books already. And so, do you happen you know, to remember when that was? I think I think 2021 and 2022, you still can take full bonus depreciation. So well, maybe it, it's just maybe it's just 2021. I don't I don't remember it, but it definitely it's going to go to 80 percent, 60 percent, 40 percent, 20 percent, zero. Got it. Um, okay. So over the next couple Five of years, I think 2025 is when it okay. is gone. So that that will go away. But that was like a special goodie that was just like created out of nowhere recently. Yeah. That wasn't that wasn't like a longstanding goodie that real estate investors got. So I still think. You know, what I said it before, when it looked like the Republicans were going to retain the Senate, I said, nothing is going to change now. I, st- I still think that nothing is going to change. Or if it does, it's going to be like nibbling around the edges to kind of have a PR, yeah, like something to tell the left wing of the Democratic Party. Like, okay, So I, 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 I agree with all of that. Bonus depreciation will just go the way of the law. Uh, 1031 is not going anywhere. But the one I question is the stepped up basis. That's one of the goodies. I'm like, hmm, I could yeah. see that going away in two or three years. I think that's that's also been around for a long time. Okay. And and I I don't I don't see. I think the you know the way that they generally fight about the uh, let's see the, let's let's look, get into what the stepped up basis is all about. Now I'm not an accountant, but I mean I have dug into this issue and talked with mm-hmm. accountants about it. The reason for the stepped up basis is because even if your <coughs> excuse me even if your estate doesn't qualify for tax because your, your estate is not big enough it's a sem- that's a tax exemption right mm-hmm. so you're essentially your estate is deemed to have paid the tax that it owes you still have to file a return mm-hmm. right in a state return so but you just if you're under 11 million dollars you're just exempt right yep. so but but essentially your your estate is deemed to have paid the tax on the on the assets you have and therefore you're entitled to the new valuation right mm-hmm. because you paid for, you paid for that capital gain yeah. right essentially so uh and that's 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 why we have that right because it's it's i mean it's all it's all an accounting fiction whatever but the, the idea is like okay you paid what you owed, and therefore now you're entitled to start again at the new right. at the new basis. Where the where Congress tends to fight about the inheritance tax is where that line is drawn, at which what estates qualify. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, what's was, the number? Is it eleven? Is years, it six? Is it yeah? Right. Mm-hmm. So for years and years and years, it was five. Yep. Then the Republicans came in, they moved it up to eleven. You know, basically, like even if you're a real estate investor, you're going to have to be pretty successful. Yeah, like die with a ten million, an eleven dollar million, eleven million dollar estate. Now, I could see, I could see that moving, right? I could see okay. in the next tax plan goes back to five, for example. Goes back to five or goes down a little bit. I mean, I think we're going to be fighting about this number until you and I are both dead, right? So, <laughs> um, but I don't think this. But the, the the reason for the stepped up basis, though, I don't think is eliminated because. Yeah, I'm going to disagree. I think, again, I'm looking at the chessboard and you've got to give things, because I think what's going to happen is is it's going to be far more about the middle going forward after yesterday's nonsense at the Capitol. But I do think you're going to have to give some things to the right and some things to the left to kind of make people get along. And I think stepped up basis, if marketed correctly, you know, by the people who want it, we'll just call it a, a giveaway to the rich. And I, I, if that sticks, watch out. Yeah, I mean, and look, maybe maybe there is a little more danger there. I mean, look, let's let's be like realistic. I think one thing that gets lost in in a lot of the shuffle mm-hmm. is that the 
kind of soak the rich policies mm -hmm. are actually broadly popular across across the political spectrum. Oh, agreed. It's not it's not like it's not like uh, you know working class people on the right are like really eager to give rich people more tax breaks. Right? I agree. They, they, they're part of the party that does it and they've kind of tolerated it. But I think one of the original appeals of Trump, which he never followed through on mm -hmm. was, hey, we're gonna like look out for you guys. Right. We're, you know, we're not just gonna look out for the rich and you know, we're gonna make this fairer and more equitable and that, that never happened. Cause then you know, the actual stuff that got written got written by the rich guys, mm -hmm. you know, the tax code. So of course it gave the goodies to them and said, essentially F you to everybody else. Right. Um, so, but, but, so I think maybe, but I don't know, just given the climate though, like I, I, I'm not so sure that any like democratic proposal is going to get much support from the people who hate Democrats. Right. So mm -hmm. like the people who sort of like in, in, inflection, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, reflexively okay like if the democrats propose it i'm against it like those kind of people are gonna oppose it even if it's good for them yeah because, the Demo because just because the democrats proposed it so yeah so uh, that's where i'm at i actually yeah. think after yesterday's nonsense on capital it's going to be less of us and them and i think the problem solvers caucus who came out of nowhere to help get this st the 600 stimulus done I think that team grows if they hold and they do vote as a block, if they do, right? That's a big if, but if they vote as a block and they get bigger from 52 to 90, um, it's going to be far more about the middle. And we got to stop talking us and them. And well, just because a Democrat nominated, I hate it, that nonsense has got to stop. I, I mean, listen, if that happens, that would be great because that's obviously what we really need. Yeah. People have been saying this for years, like, hey, this is what we really Well, that's need. what I think yesterday's capital thing. I think that is this watershed moment. I think it was nonsense. Well, I think it was terrible it happened. But as we just saw, when they came back together and they got it done by 3.30 in the morning, some of the, I don't know what you call it, protests or fights against the, uh, I think yesterday was a watershed moment. I really do. It's going to be something we, we remember. I remember 9-11. I think I'm going to remember well, January 6th. I think people are going to remember it, but I, 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 I hope you're right. But what I saw was that, you know, some of the senators kind of like their rational brains kicked in after all that nonsense happened, but you still had the majority of the house Republicans objecting, mm -hmm. you know, to certifying the election, which says to me that in spite of everything, they're still more afraid of their own base than they are of anything else. And given, we'll see, given, yeah. given the way that, that, with the gerrymander, you know, Congress has gerrymandered itself, where I guess they're not in, in responsible for it, but they work with the states mm -hmm. to gerrymander themselves into their jobs, right? So, they, so they're not accountable to the people. They're really only accountable to the voters in their own parties, right? right? There are very few swing districts in Congress anymore because of the way that the districts are drawn to, to basically benefit incumbents. And all that does is, is create more polarization because mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't have to face the if if you win the election by winning the primary then yeah. it just makes people more and more extreme right and right. Every, whether it's whether it's it doesn't matter which side it is whether it's red or blue right if if you if it only matters that you win the primary then that just forces people to become more and more and more extreme to satisfy the, the more extreme elements of their own parties so until we do something about the gerrymandering yep and it's going to be very difficult to to get back toward the center again and right. I, and unfortunately i don't think because the the political incentives are so strong to continue the gerrymandering mm -hmm. without and the supreme court has washed its hands of this there was a challenge to this last year or the year before the supreme court basically said oh we're just not getting into it mm. which was a, a big mistake in my view um but they it, it, i just there's no right now. I mean, a couple of states have, have enacted nonpartisan redistricting, which is good, but not enough of them have. It's still right. in the hands of politicians. I mean, this is crazy if you think about it. Why it's like telling the politicians that they're allowed to regulate themselves, right? Why on earth yeah. would you allow them to draw their own districts? You know, uh, it, it's, it's just nuts. So I, I, I don't I don't understand why more states have not adopted those rules, but you know, I guess they're all 
to one extent or another, the captive of one party or the other, mm -hmm. and it, it makes it very difficult to, to. Yeah, but let's get back to real estate, right? Yeah. Um, so, so as of the the, so let's ask this question specifically. This was going to be its own episode, but we'll put it here. Based on the fact that Georgia flipped, and now you have quote unquote the blue wave that people were talking about. Um, did anything change in the valuation of commercial real estate, in your opinion? You know, would you look at a deal differently today than a week ago? No, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. For the two reasons for that, one is that the first and most obvious one is that uh, you should never be looking at deals from a tax perspective only, mm. anyway, right? If it doesn't work on its own merits, right? Don't do the deal, right? So. People who are looking at deals like for just for tax reasons, it says, as my friend Ted Lanzaros, he's, who's an accountant, always says, you know, people who are thinking about the taxes first are, you know, are basically trading dollars for quarters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, I hate the government so much. I'm going to take 75 cents out of my own pocket in order to avoid paying 25 cents to the government, yep. right? So- uh, if you if you're thinking that way, you should kind of have a rethink of where you are, right? It's not. It's, it doesn't Is make that any sense. just for example, so people can keep up? That's the whole. I'm going to go buy a brand new six thousand pound truck on December thirty first. Example. Well, not. I I wouldn't say it's not. It, that could be an example. If you're planning on buying the truck anyway, right? Right. Of course. Then it's then it's a, that's smart, right? Do it this year. Yeah. You know, ex, have it expense tax you know, time value. Yeah, money. get the twenty five cents. But if you were just looking right. at your tax statement, going, "Oh my God, it's, I got to go buy a truck." It's it's the people who are, like, going to their accountants and saying, "Should I do this money losing deal to save uh, taxes?" Okay. Right. Because I need a tax write off. Right. Right. And, and <laughs> should I sign of, up for a loss? Yeah. 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 Should I go? Should I go lose a dollar in order to, to get 25 cents back from the government? Oh, right. Yeah. Cause they just don't understand how it, how it works. And they don't understand like how it, like say harvesting tax losses really works or things like that. Right. They're just, they're, they're not thinking about it rationally. Right. So because of, because they just hate tax so much, but it's like, Hey, get, Get, make the dollar and then worry about the tax, right? Don't give up the dollar that you made because you're worried that because you don't want to pay the 25 cents or 33 cents or whatever it is, right? So, so, th so from that perspective, I don't think actually, I'm going to say there's three reasons. So, so first is like, don't do tax div driven deals, right? Look at the deal on its own merits. Ta Real estate's already tax advantaged. And like I said, it's not going to change, right? So that's. That's point A. Um, point B is, let's assume that the tax code does change somehow, right? Is, is real estate, like if the 1031 goes away tomorrow or the stepped up basis goes away tomorrow, what does that mean? It just means that real estate is basically on more of an equal footing with every other investment out there, right? Mm -hmm. And if, and so, it, it it again comes back to is this deal going to make me money or not right worrying about a 1031 exchange like 10 years from now mm -hmm. that you may not be able to pull off anyway because it is so difficult to do yeah especially in a in a hot market right and when most people do 1031 exchanges they do them in a dumb way anyway and i have a whole video about this uh in my course but the typical person does a 1031 exchange by like buy selling in a, in a really hot market because at the top, it's because like, oh boy, I'm going to sell and make all this money and then scrambling to try to find a deal. Mm -hmm. And then oftentimes doing a bad deal just to save the money yeah. on taxes, right? They're not doing it strategically. What I've seen people do is really strategically is like selling properties that they've, they've had, you know, like the property they've had for 30 years, right? Selling it after a crash right? Because they've got so much capital gain built up. Now they've got this, huge, and now they're like, I'm going to go buy myself a bargain, right? right. That I couldn't afford otherwise, right? And so, yeah, they, did they give up a little bit on the gain? Sure. But they're thinking about the next deal and how, how, how well they're going to do. Right. So I think, so even if 1031 your calculation, I don't think so. So uh, I don't think that changes the valuation. And then the, the final point I want to make is the, 
the government has the ability to kind of mess around with the economy for sure, depending on, you know, it can change interest rates, it can do stuff like that stuff can change. But I don't think that, you know, the generally speaking, the economy is so large in the United States and so powerful, it just goes on its own momentum, right? And I don't think the change of parties, if you look at it, it there's never been a recession ever caused by the change of parties, right? Has it ever happened? No, you know, no, no. I mean, we just saw like the recovery that started under Obama went straight, just continued straight through, you know, the whole, pretty much most of the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's just what you see. Like when the economy's on a roll, it keeps rolling. And then it, it you know, the natural business cycle forces will take over and cause a recession or, mm -hmm. you know, if inflation gets out of control, the, the, the Fed will raise interest rates and that might cause a recession, mm -hmm. right? So that's what happens, not because one part or the other is in charge. I don't think they really have enough, you know, uh, aside from, you know, which isn't going to happen, but aside from them saying like, oh, we're going to outlaw all private transactions. I mean, it's, you know, something crazy like that, which isn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, it, it's very hard to see how the government really has the ability to uh, you know, to, to influence the business cycle that much. Right. And, and especially in a situation now, like, I don't think we're going to see any huge stimulus. I mean, we had this, another big stimulus. I, I mean, they're talking about the $2,000 per person thing. I think that that might go through, but I don't think we're going to see like a huge stimulus bill. Uh, so, uh, I mean, and anyway, that wouldn't be bad for the economy anyway, right? I mean, I yeah. don't think anybody would say like, oh, don't give us stimulus because that would be bad for the economy. They might say you're devaluing the dollar, you're going to cause inflation down the road. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds hangover, of other reasons, yeah. but not, there's a hangover, but there's not, there's no like, oh, please don't give us that money. <laughs> like there's no constituency out there saying, don't give us the money. We don't want it. It's bad yeah. for us, right? So, right. Uh, so I, I, I I'm just, people spend a lot of time worrying about the government. Yeah. And I think the government has less, I mean, they, they act like it's this all powerful malevolent force right. that's like out to get them. And, you know, whether it's like the local dog catcher or whether it's the president of the United States, they think that, the, you know, the government's out to get them personally. And it's just, yeah. Not, right. I mean, so it, it doesn't, it doesn't, I just, I just don't, I just don't you don't buy it. What, what, do you, what do you think? What's your so, I, so I think there's a couple of things. So first off, I do think there's a bigger stimulus coming. And I, I, I think I, I actually put a number on it because I like being held accountable. So I think it'll be 1.6 because I read, they're already talking about a $600 billion deal, which is roughly the 2000. I think they're going to lump in state aid. I think they're going to lump. I think they're, I don't think they like the pace of vaccine rollout. So I think they're going to throw that in there. I don't think they fact that they, all the kids are still learning at home. So they're going to throw in some education money. So yeah, I think a big ass stimulus is coming. I think it's coming in Q1. It could come in February, by late February, maybe early March. Uh, but as you've said, I think it net net is good for the economy. I think I think it takes a hot economy and makes it hotter. I think I think we will have a record yearly GDP growth in 2021. That's that's kind of where I am. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I I kind of feel like I don't think that the Republicans are going to come along, and you're going to need Republican. At least you're going to need the Republicans and not obstruct it. Yeah. Right. We'll see. And, I mean, we'll know very and, soon. Yeah. And I, and, and given how much trouble, even with, with Trump pushing the Republicans for a bigger stimulus bill and they, they, I don't really, I can't understand why, like, even with, a, even, you know, unless they get rid of the filibuster, right. And, and, or they, or there's some kind of, maybe there's the budget reconciliation process they can use that where they don't need, it's you can't filibuster it right mm -hmm. or maybe that's what they do but i i i feel like why why would the republicans go along you know or or stand aside and not try to obstruct it when they when they, they wouldn't even do it for trump right well see and that's why, where i'm at that's where i'm at that's where i'm different today than yesterday i think yesterday the uh, Republicans, this, I, I try to stay away from naming things, but you, you can't do it on this topic. The Republicans were, were a block. And I think you're going to have a set of them. It won't be all, it won't even be most of them, but it'll be 20% maybe that go, you know what? I'm an American first. This is good. 
uh, I'm not. I'm going to step away from the block because they're all going to remember January 6th. Now it won't last long. It won't last till next year. But I think Joe. I think Joe Biden's first six months are easier now than they would have been uh, without yesterday. I think that is one of the outcomes that will be surprising. Is Joe Biden's six first six months? It'll be like the first six months after 9/11. We were all Americans after 9/11. There wasn't any red or blue. We were all focused on getting the bad guy. And I think, you know, I think yesterday the extreme won or the extreme did what they wanted. And now the middle, which is most of us, woke up. It won't last. It's but it but again, I the thing where I'm at is Joe Biden's first six months in office will be a hell of a lot easier today than it would have been yesterday. That's where I'm at. Well that's that's interesting. I mean I, I hadn't thought of it that way. And I Maybe you're right. I mean, I, I, I'd like to think that's right, but um, it's it's definitely possible. And I'm not, not going to say like, oh, no way, no how. I mean, I think that there are some people who are going to dig in their heels. More oh, for sure. After this. Oh, but I yeah. do, but I do, but I do agree with you. I think that there is, uh, I, I think, you know, this is probably, ex what happened yesterday is, gonna, is accelerating this process, but everything that I've been reading was that, you know, sort of the, the upcoming civil war within the Republican Party, mm -hmm. you know, for for control, like who's it's gonna is it gonna be the the yep more fervent you know Trump faction or is it gonna be the more you know old style traditional faction, you know who's and who's gonna win and they they both want control and now we're gonna have this fight. I think after yesterday, that that fight is really on mm -hmm. like big time and whether that results in. Uh, not defections like people changing parties, Switch, but yeah. defections in terms of like the, the old sort of lockstep. Yep. That's what I think down. happens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. And then the last thing I'll say that I didn't get to and kind of what changes is, uh, again, I think the stepped up basis, as I said earlier, is at more risk than the 1031 exchange. But what I do think will happen, and again, I think it's the first six months. And, he, and again, it's back to Joe Biden having an easier six months is capital gains on millionaires, right? If you make a million bucks, capital mm -hmm. gains is gonna go from 20% to ordinary income. There are gonna be some things like that that happen, but it'll be coached as the rich. And again, that, that'll that be very easy to sell on both sides. Again, I think I think it'll be impressive what Joe gets done in the first six months because of yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we have it on record. We're gonna come yeah. back in six months and see if you're right. Yeah, uh, well, you have an announcement, right? You wanted to announce something you're oh, doing. It's pretty exciting. I do, yes. I do. So thank you very much for reminding me. So uh, this week, this company, so uh, today is Thursday, the 7th. So Correct. I'm rolling this out tomorrow. It's going to be open for uh, till the 12th, I believe. Uh, I am rolling out a new version of my multifamily launch pad program. Uh, and this is going to be, this is the first place people are hearing it. Uh, I've been running a, a free training series, which I would love for you to check out. Mm -hmm. um, but, and this is sort of the culmination of it, but I'm rolling out a new version of Multifamily Launchpad where I'm gonna personally take you through the program over 12 weeks. Um, if you would like to be part of that, the best way to do it is to go to the following website and, and register for the free training series, which is, I, if I do say this for myself, it's really great. People have been like really, really enjoying it. I walk you through how to do a syndication, how to find deals, how to raise the money in three sort of 30 minute videos. Uh, you know, it's it's on a high level, but a really good overview of the process, and and people have been you know writing me a lot of really complimentary stuff for this, and even some people in my own program who have been, who ha you know have already have access to much more in depth materials have been saying like, hey, this is really I really appreciate this. So, uh, the website is uh, multifamilylaunchpad.org slash this is horrible. You should post it. This, this URL. It'll be the first, it'll be the first line yeah. on the description folks. It's multifamily slash real estate slash, sorry, slash real slash. It's here. I'm going to read you the whole thing and put a slash in between each a hyphen between each of these words with so multifamily launchpad.org hyphen multifamily real estate investing free training series backslash with hyphens between everything. You'll never remember that. Mike is going to put this on the, on the, your, the, the website uh, for me, but Anyway, go there, get the free training, and then if you want to join me in this new uh, this new thing I'm launching, welcome me to All Arms. It's going to be it's going to be a great program. So, very cool. Well, thank you very much for your time, Jonathan. On to topic number two. Thank you.